when it comes to cycle geometry, uh, getting the keywords right from the statement is the most important thing because with the keywords you are then able to answer all the questions if you're wondering why i'm starting with 8.2 8.1 was saying let's prove the turn code theorem and we've already done that i will leave the link in the description in the diagram below pwrs is a cyclic quadrilateral so cyclic quadrilateral i'm writing that down so we have cyclic quad and then um the circle is centered at o p p s w is an equilateral triangle so i have triangle p s w which is equilateral so when a triangle is equilateral all the angles are equal the only way all the angles can be equal is if all the angles are equals to 60 degrees t w is a tangent to the circle so we have tangent and then we have radi o r right radius o r so let's say radi and then o w are drawn and then we are told that w1 is equal to 25 degrees so all the questions that we are going to answer we are going to stick to these keywords except from basic things like angles on a straight line and so on so 8.2.1 8.2.1 a says uh, determine given reasons the size of S1. So we are interested on S1. Yes, S1 here. So how can we use cyclic quad to determine S1? Uh, S1 is not a complete angle, right? So I don't see how we can immediately jump to S1. The next keyword talks about triangle PSW being equilateral. S1 is not in that triangle, so I don't see how we can use that. And then the third point talks about uh, the tangent. We have tangent TW, right? And this is how we are going to determine S1. Look at W5. W5 is between TW and RW. And then at the same time, RW subtends S1. So S1 will be equals to W5 it will be equals to 25 degrees and why are we saying so turn cord theorem and then let's move to b uh, b says let's find o1 again we're not thinking about anything else either than the four keywords we have cyclic quad this no immediate connection between o1 and the cyclic quad angle psw uh, o1 is not an angle on psw right so we cannot it cannot help us with anything and then tangent uh, o1 is at the center of a circle uh, there's no immediate way that is connected to a tangent right because uh, usually when we're talking about tangent we're talking about the tangent theorem and now the only option we're left with is radi right let's look at how radi can help us uh, obviously or and ow are equal to each other so angle r2 will be equals to angle uh, w3 plus w4 right we see in that uh, this angle here is equals to this angle here so now we can say that o1 is equals to 180 minus 2r2 right because we're gonna minus r2 and we're gonna mod minus w3 plus w4 but we know that w3 and w4 is equals to r2 so minus 2r2 so if we can find a way to find r2 or w3 and w4 then we can find uh, angle o1 right o w is a radius right and it touches uh, the tangent where it touches the tangent forms an angle of 90 right uh, we know that for sure so now we can see that w3 plus w4 plus w5 is equals to 90 degrees uh, i'm talking about uh, this angle here right but we know what w4 is uh, we know what w5 is w5 is 25 degrees right so we're gonna have w3 plus w4 being equals to 90 degrees minus 25 degrees and that will be equals to 65 degrees so now in place of r2 we can put 65 degrees so we're gonna have o1 being equals to 180 minus 2 
multiply by 65, which will be 130. So O1 is equals to 50 degrees. We just stick into the keywords and nothing else. So A has two marks, o, uh, B has two marks, and then C has uh, five marks. And then now let's do A the point two point two. Eight point two point two says let's prove that SP is parallel to TW. So we're proving that SP is parallel to TW. Obviously, we don't have coordinates here. So there's no way we're going to be calculating the gradient. We have to do that uh, using angles some way, somehow. So if these two lines are parallel, uh, then this angle here, uh, W1, should be equal to this angle P here. Uh, but then at the same time, W1 should be equal to S2. Why are we saying that to our keywords again? Tangent. We're using the term code theorem, right? We're sticking to the keyword. So now we can say that W1 is equals to S2. Uh, we already said that S2 will be close to 60 degrees, right? Why are we saying S2 is equals to 60, 60 degrees? Because triangle PSW is an equilateral. So W1 is equals to S2, but S2 is, is, is equals to S2. PW. There are angles on an equilateral triangle and all those angles will be equal to 60 degrees and we are done with 8.2.2. We can give a reason and say that uh, they are alternate angles. 